Thank you very much. Uh, before I get started, I do not remember 1900. <laughs> <laughs> However, both my wife and I did grow up without electricity in our early years and with outdoor plumbing. How many of you remember that? How many of you would like to go back to that? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, about uh, 20 or so. That's where I got my education. Out behind the barn. <laughs> about 20 or so years ago, a small group of scientists uh, started raising a fuss over global warming and the fact that it was caused by humans. Well, the willing media picked up on it and made it to a feeding frenzy. About five or so years after that, the rest of the scientific community woke up and said, whoa, wait a minute, you don't have all of the data. There are other possibilities. And that's where I'm going to pick it up to show you that, yes, indeed, there are many other possibilities. So what is really causing our current climate change? And let's look at it. Some pertinent questions here. Has the climate warmed significantly in the last hundred years? Is any of that warming that occurred part of the natural cycle, or is it unusual? What is the time frame of reference? Now, that's very important because you can use endpoint bias. You can do all sorts of things. For instance, you've all seen what's happened to our temperature in the last month or so. Now, I predict the next four or three, four months, that's going to really go down fast. <laughs> now, if that, if that trend continues for three or four years, we're going to be in deep snow. But see, that's what I mean by frame of reference. I was trying to get my students to look at that. So when you're talking to a geologist, you know, we study climate throughout Earth history. And you're going to tell me it's the hottest, the coldest, the most, the least, or whatever to say. No, it's not. I can show you sometime earlier when we had something equally as bad. So we're going to look at the geologic record, see what it shows us. We find out that climate is cyclical. You don't even have to get too far into geology to see this. All you got to do is look at Time Magazine and go back about a century. See, in the 10s and 20s, about a century ago, everybody was worried about the coming ice age. And we got into the hot 30s and it was alarming warming. And then after that, into the 70s, we had the coming ice age again. How many of you remember cover of Science or Time or Newsweek where we had this ice, this glacier taking out New York City? Talk about urban renewal. At any rate, then we get to the 90s, and it's alarming warming all over again. Now, all of this at the time was claimed to be supported by the latest science. No doubt, consensus, this is what was going to happen. But now, again, we're in a cooling trend. But three years ago, I had an interview with the St. Cloud Times, a local newspaper, and I ended, they ended their presentation with a quote for me saying that in 10 years, nobody had talked about global warming. When's the last time you heard anything about global warming? See, they changed it. It's now climate change. Why? Well, because the Earth is cooling now. Let's look at the uh, bit of Earth history here. We're way over here. Go back 10,000 years, we came out of the last ice age. And then, the earliest 50 to 70 years ago, we knew that the early half of the last 10,000 years was much warmer than today. See, we call that the climate optimum. See, we were kind of dumb then. We didn't know that that hot would destroy everything, even though it didn't. Polar bears lived through it, by the way. But see, here, if you go back three to four hundred years ago, we have something called a little ice age. We should all get down on our knees every day and thank whatever you wish to thank that we're no longer in that. That was a very nasty time. So we've been warming up ever since, and that, in some cases, this was considered the coldest time in the last 10,000 years. This one back here was a little bit, perhaps a bit colder, but 
Very few times colder than that. Very nasty time to be alive. But you can see what we're looking at today is not unusual. It's been there before. So what drives climate? Well, what frame of time are you looking at? We can look at long term. So we have different drivers for that. Uh, I could get into a lot of science and that. Let's just suffice it to say that kind of depends on where the solar system is in the Milky Way galaxy. But see, uh, most of us aren't going to be around 10 million years anyway, so we'll just look at the short term, decades to centuries. And the big debate here now is, is it the burning of fossil fuels generating CO2? Or are we actually looking at some natural cycles that we have absolutely no control over and that are controlled by the sun? So that's the big debate today. That's the grand experiment. And believe it or not, there's nothing we can do to change any part of it. This experiment will play out and we will know. I tell my students and give them a homework assignment. Come back in five years and tell me if I'm right. I probably won't be there in five years, but that's okay. <laughs> they get the point. Okay, let's look at the greenhouse idea, the CO2 model first. Uh, CO2 is not the only greenhouse gas. It's one of the half a dozen or more. In fact, it's not the main greenhouse gas. Water vapor is. In fact, if you, can, if you look at the literature, you'll see all kinds of different quotes on this, but water vapor generally is said to account for at least 90% of the total greenhouse effect. And then we have CO2, but you see CO2 is pretty well already maxed out. We're going to look at a chart here in a minute, but most that study this would say you can raise CO2 and double it, and it's not going to make that much difference. So, many of us also think, in fact about 31,000 of us think this is a really a sham, and that the forcing of increasing CO2 that is being used by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that we think we've got that for, they've got that forcing at least two times too large and maybe four or five. Okay, here's the chart. You see if we have zero CO2, which would be very much of a problem, by the way. Uh, we get up to about uh, 50 parts per million. We've got almost all of the CO2 effect already. See, this is the pre-industrial time. This is about where we're at now. This is a doubling. So you see, that's the change. It's not much. Why did I say zero CO2 would be a problem? No plants use it. Plants absolutely need CO2. Without it, they're dead and so are we. And we came, in the height of the last ice age, we were down here about 180. Plants are really stressed. You get much lower than that, and you don't come out of it. So to be just at twice that, we look at the geologic record, and we see in most of the past Earth history, we were five to ten times higher CO2 in the atmosphere than we are today. So I don't get excited about another 